Well, thank you for having us here. It, it is, we've just done a tour and it is an incredible thing to see. When you look out and you see this, is this, this is the past. Do you see potential? Do you see future? Do you see money? What, what do you see when you look out and see these crops behind you? I see the culmination of several years in the making of diligent planning, um, a lot of gray matter applied to get to the success story we are today. Uh, what you have behind us here is the culmination of many, many, many hours of, of a lot of leaders out of Freya bringing this all together. And this is just the plant. It's the other things you do not see, our, our standard operating procedures, all of our GMP compliancy, uh, the, the transformational automation that uh, you, you've, you've seen, uh, revolutionary, uh, never seen before in this space. We've, the team has brought together the, the uh, evolution of technology from different sectors, different countries, the Netherlands, Germany, even the US, to bring together what we have today, all in an effort of making sure we are the top of the class, best of class, as they say, when it comes to the cultivation. We're a month away from recreational legalization. Uh, people would look at you and say, market cap is way up, stock price is way up, you're, you're hitting all your targets in terms of production, everything's going great. You're a CEO, so you probably don't think like that. What keeps no, you up? At no, that? not at all. What, what is it that keeps you up? At that? Well, uh, it has been quite a story. The, the, the Afria journey that started with a, a little half acre of greenhouse, uh, uh, older aged greenhousing that we retrofitted in, and now you see where we're at today. The, the story evolves, not just medical, but recreational, as you said on October 17th. And to make sure you're one of the market leaders, you have to have not cultivation only and good quality at low cost, but you have to now translate all of that into what the consumer wants. So our oil extraction, our center of excellence that we're building toward, uh, getting the refinement of oils so that we're ready for the next transformation once Health Canada allows, and that would be vape pens, followed by infused foods um, of, of certain definition and ultimately beverages. So it's this is part of our story, and this, this starts the story. And without this, it goes no further, but it's all of the other parts of our, of our moving journey called Afria that's very important. Then you combine it with our marketing team, and, and I'm very, very proud of what we've developed to date. We spent probably a year and a half in, in, uh, in the investigative mode, all of the quantitative, the qualitative analysis, coast to coast, focus groups, I can go on and on, to understand in our definition, we have five target consumers, five defined profiles. Everywhere uh, from the beginning of the novice, the, uh, um, the one who wants to try but doesn't want to be seen trying, uh, doesn't want to go into dispensary online maybe for her, but she wants the, for the most part she, 60% of this population base is she, 40% he. They want the subtlety, they want the education, they want you to engage with them to say it's safe uh, and it's fun. All the way up to the other side of the profile uh, scale, the enthusiast. Um, one of my co-founder partners, Goli Kachavani, that's the scotch and cigar guy, uh, the connoisseur, uh, the heavy user. Um, so from A to Z, we've got all five bu buckets covered with our, our five different brands that we're bringing uh, to life uh, on October 17th. So we have, what, 150,000 plants, I think, in here. Um, just give us a sense of what your production level is now, mm -hmm. and then when phase four and five come online, I think, let, let's game ahead to the end of 2019, how much production are you going to be able to, to grind out by then? Are you ready for these numbers? I, I, I mean, they're I'm mind boggling. And they are okay. Mind -boggling. Um, it's funny, uh, when we look at our beginnings, when we were kicking out 5,000 kilos, uh, today, as we sit here between our, our original and part two and now part three expansion, we're sitting on 300,000 feet of greenhouse and we're, we're looking at about 30,000 kilos of annualized harvest. And that's split between what eventually goes into dried bud and oils today on the medical platform. Fast forward, uh, our part four expansion of 700,000 feet at Afria One, the campus we're in today, and the 1.3 million feet of greenhouse, which is about five clicks just north of us, called Afria Diamond. When we're all said and done, we will have 2.5 million square feet of greenhouse, and about 500 
thousand feet of infrastructure housing all of our oil extraction centers, all of the R&D, the, the QAQC labs, processing, drying, warehousing, blah, blah, blah. That's 300, that's 3 million square feet of footprint. That will be capable on an annualized basis in excess of 255,000 kilos of harvest. A year. A year. I would suggest that by May or June, depending on Health Canada uh, timeliness of uh, uh, site inspection approvals and then the usual four month seat to sale, I'm going to suggest to you that by May or June of 2019 we will be in what we call full crop rotation. That means every greenhouse square foot I've just described will have plant at certain life cycles to it. Uh, we'll be kicking out in excess of 20,000 keys a month. A month. A month. Uh, and and I know you don't get too specific on this, but do you yet know what the profit margin per kilo will be for for it? It depends on what platform. So we have uh, the international platform for export. We have medical that continues to grow leaps and bounds. I'm very proud of my medical, my professional outreach team, and then recreational. It's the latter one that's the big uh, uh, dollar amount, big kilo amount, uh, but also. A big unknown. The type of pricing that we have now entered into with every province and all of our MOUs accordingly, uh, we are out there at a blended average, probably about five dollars a gram on average, uh, less for certain um, uh, good, better, best uh, from right. a good perspective, all the way up to Broken Coast, which is significantly higher than that. But when you average it all out, uh, the blended is about five dollars. Um, that translates to somewhere around nine and a half to ten dollars per gram, taxes in, excise, HST to the consumer out the door. Shareholders have been really excited. They've invested heavily into the pot sector, uh, but a lot of it, had, the growth has been ethereal. They haven't had really anything to judge those results against. On October seventeenth, we'll begin to see that. I get it'll be a process, but is are we entering into the risk phase now for for real for companies, not just yours, but all of the the pot players? Uh, in Canada, we'll begin to see companies fail now, won't we? Yeah, you, you, you've you hit the center of, of the hurricane. You're going to have for a period of time, whether that window is three, four or five months, but a period of time leading up to October 17th because of pipeline fill shipments that the provinces are requiring. And then the POS data on takeaway sales that the consumer will, will drive that, that needle. But you will have a window of time um, to perform and there will be failures there will be shortcomings there will be short shipments it's the it's the ability of licensed producers who have these brands that they've they've thrown out there in many press releases and promises here there and everywhere what what is truly the reality going to be uh, who is prepared i'm going to suggest to you no lp is fully prepared because of the unknown and therefore the, the estimates of, of what they want, provincial regulators. But there will come a time where, whether it's Quebec, Ontario, Alberta, a province will say enough is enough. We've given you a chance. This is our real estate. You're just a tenant on my real estate. Um, just like Shoppers Drug and Jameson Vitamins were just a, a tenant on, as their, and they were the landlord. Same thing here. You have to prove yourself to get on, which we have. Now you have to prove yourself to stay on which we will. It's not just about the brands and speaking to these different consumer profile baskets that I refer to. It's also new product innovation, uh, new genetics coming on, making sure that your price points are meeting their expectations. I could tell you there's a province, uh, again, if you take my $5 on average blended, what I'm selling to province A, uh, and they add their excise, the excise tax and their cost of recovery of, of in margin and the HST, uh, you're going to find that we're probably priced uh, that $5 equates to nine nine fifty a gram. I can tell you the sweet spot for this province was seven thirty five a gram. They know their target audience, but more importantly, they know that to thwart organized crime, there's a price point. And the price point right now is about seven bucks from Joe on the street corner, um, and this 935 doesn't. There's an imbalance. I'm going to suggest to you, Peter, that once we're in full crop rotation, May June of 2019, and sometime thereafter, 
when there are other brands, I won't call them licensed producers, other brands that are failing for whatever the reasons, or their price points are just not hitting the objectives of these provincial regulators, they're gonna come back. And they're gonna demand price compression. And if you don't grow to scale, to quality, like we see behind me, that our costs are being driven lower and lower and lower, this transformational automation I referred to is all part of that, uh, you're, you're not going to be the winner at the end of the day. Some of the LPs have partnered with the Constellation brands and the Molsons or the whatever. Uh, you guys were in the Molson race for a little bit, it seemed, and, and that, that didn't work out. Did you, did you make a conscious effort to, to really bolster your brand through automation, through investment in robotics? Like, I mean, that whole new operation is almost all automated. Automation is about reducing costs but never sacrificing quality. I tell you, if we didn't do the level of automation we have in our part four, we're probably looking at least another 300 full-time equivalent uh, labor, general laborers. That's, that's, that's a lot. Um, I use the expression, machines don't go on vacation, they don't get sick, they don't have employee benefits, you sweat them 24 hours a day, it doesn't matter how hot it is, etc versus employees. Now you need manpower, don't get me wrong, but just a fact of, of correlation. Without our automation, we would have somewhere between 14 to 16 workers per acre. So in here you'd probably, uh, it's, it's five acres, so multiply it by five. With automation, you'll see two to four. So I'm driving out labor costs, but also all of the issues that come with manpower. Um, our last quarter we kicked out a cash cost of 94 cents a gram. Um, full crop rotation, you come back and check me out in May of 2019, we'll be, we'll be below 80 cents, hopefully around a 75 cent mark on cash cost. That's automation. Do you need to bolster the company in partnerships or through automation? Like, what do you need to do to survive? And some have said we need to make these big partnerships. You guys were in some of that, but ha have also bolstered it up through automation. From a cultivation, because of who my team is, the, the DNA of, of, of our growers, we're agriculture guys in a greenhouse. A plant is 90% the same. I don't care, tomato, cukes, or cannabis. It's the other 10%. We're five years into this journey. First of all, we're still learning. Uh, Mother Nature is, is never consistent, uh, she keeps us on our toes, uh, but we, we have really, really developed and honed in on techniques of, of thwarting pest A, B and C depending if it's spring, summer, fall, winter. Um, the whole understanding of the lighting system and how we have now LEDs, industry leading, um, and the blue power lighting that you're, you're seeing behind us here. These are all evolution of learnings and you have to have the talent. So. To seek a partnership for cultivation, no, it's embedded in our team. When it comes to reaching out and leveraging the, the, the benefits of low cost, high quality oil extraction into the next round of cannabis products. infused products, not just foods, but including beverages, absolutely. So perennial, <coughs> rapid dose, we are looking at these partnerships that we've already entered into and there's others that are well down the road of discussion. These are all um, product innovations that we want to control uh, and or partners that are very skilled in their respective uh, market niches. But there's a bigger picture. Right. Uh, and the bigger picture is taking us into other opportunities and, and, and beverages. Let's just not focus in on non-alcoholic beer here that's infused with THC, which is a, a very very market niche and a casual user, it's, it's not the big ticket. There are many other beverages, and I do want your viewers to understand, it's recovery drinks, it's energy drinks, uh, it's utility drinks, it's juices, it's a cab salve without any alcohol and therefore no sugar in the calories. Uh, uh, my wife drinking her one or two glasses of wine of cab salve every night that, you know, as you can now replace some of these entertainment fun activities with something that is is very conducive to this entertainment uh, definition well listen we have to leave it there but it's a fascinating time and a fascinating industry and i really appreciate you showing us around yes yeah, it's uh glad to have you here peter it uh so proud of what we have here okay. it uh, and it's been a lot of challenges but lots of fun
and a lot of fun it has been. Right. All right, we'll talk again soon. Thanks Great, so. thank you.